Okay, so for now, we recognize that stressors can originate either inside of the cell or inside of the body, and there are other stressors that originate from the outside. So, <clears throat> we will define these stressors, then we will work our way, uh, and try to decipher how do they cause biochemical and structural changes, because they are stressors, they cause cell injury, they cause cell death. They cause cell death differently based on which cell they target and based on their nature. So all the stressors don't work in the same way. We, we will see that. There is a very important point that I, I would like to, to re reiterate. The first point is, Oxidative phosphorylation is the main cause for ATP generation in the body. It is the cellular respiration and it is aerobic and requires oxygen. If there is a deficiency in oxygen supply that isn't rectified in time, the cell will die because it is unable to generate the adequate amount of ATP required for it running the, the proper cellular biochemical pathways for its survival and there wouldn't even be enough ATP for the cell to, to for, for the pro-apoptotic enzymes in the cell that cause or induce apoptotic cell death. So let me drive your, we will come back to the stressors, but I want to drive your attention to the effect of the stressors and how they can, and what is the ultimate, what is the ultimate goal of the stressors and what do most stressors do so that we can realize all those stressors originate from different sources either inside of the cell inside of the body or externally from the external environment in the end although they are different there are so many ways by which they are able to hurt the cell the first way is oxygen deficiency leading or, or impairing the mitochondria which is the primary site where oxidative phosphorylation is carried out or the generation of reactive oxidative species in which they are free radicals that cause grave damage in the cell free radicals cause oxidative stress so when we hear the term or see the term oxidative stress it is the damage caused by reactive oxidative species so we'll talk about reactive oxidative species and what they do we'll talk about oxidative phosphorylation we'll talk about endoplasmic reticulum stress and these three mechanisms oxidative phosphor I'm sorry oxidative phosphorylation reactive oxidative species endoplasmic reticulum stress and membrane damage membrane damage includes plasma membrane damage includes uh, lysosomal membrane damage and mitochondrial membrane damage let's begin rapidly with uh, mitochondria a damage, a severe damage to the mitochondrial apparatus and causing an inability for the mitochondria to, to carry out the electron transport chain or the, the, the aerobic respiration and, and generating ATP will ultimately lead to necrotic cell death. There will never be apoptotic cell death in the case of of an impairment in the production of ATP or an impairment in, in, an impairment in the production of ATP by the mitochondria or in a situation where there is an impairment in oxidative phosphorylation. So another mechanism by which the, the, the stressors damage the cell, it's the targeting of the membrane, membranous apparatus in the cell. So how many membranes we have there? We have the nuclear membrane, 
we have the mitochondrial membrane, we have lysosomal membranes, and we have plasma membranes. The plasma membrane is important for electron, for, for um, ion transport, for maintaining isoosmosis. It is full of channels and gates for the entry and exit of important molecules. Now, what kind of damage is the plasma membrane subjected to determines the fate of whether the cell will die necrotically or apoptotically. If the damage that the plasma membrane undergoes is a minor damage in the sense where there are channels that are bound by toxins, there's a bacterial toxin that binds a membrane transport channel leading to an inability of the passing of particular ions or a disruption in the isosmotic gradient leading to a swelling of the cell, then that will lead to cell death by apoptosis. So there is no shortage of ATP. And because there is no shortage of ATP, the enzymes that induce apoptosis are functioning properly. And therefore, a minor damage to the, or, or a, a damage to the plasma mem membrane leads to death by apoptosis. But if there is a major damage to the plasma membrane leading to leakage of cellular content, like organelles or cytoplasm or the integrity and the structural integrity of the cytoplasm is, is, is destroyed, that will surely lead to death by necrosis because the, the intercellular content of the cell will leak through this disruption in plasma membrane integrity. The second case is lysosomal membranes. If there is a break, if there is a break in, if there's a stressor that causes a break in the, uh, in the lysosomal membrane, that will cause spilling of the, of the intercellular reactive oxidative species that are meant to operate within the lysosome and destroy microbes that invade the cell or ubiquitinated or, 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 or metabolic waste or things destined for degradation by the lysosome. These, the leakage of these enzymes into the cytoplasm and their concomitant activation by the acidic cytoplasm environment leads to the content of the lysosome destroying the cell itself and that causes necrotic cell death. The other form of uh, necrotic cell death that could take place is when the structural integrity of the mitochondria is, is damaged. If there is a stressor that causes a damage to the structural integrity of the mitochondrial membrane, hence making the ATP synthase unable to operate, destroying the proton motive force, and hence disabling the aerobic respiration and disabling the, the oxidative phosphorylation, that will surely lead to death by necrosis. However, if there are cases where there is endoplasmic reticulum stress, how is endoplasmic reticulum stress caused? It is caused by a stressor that leads, the stressor leads to the, uh, the endoplasmic reticulum stress is caused by a stressor that causes proteins to unfold or to be misfolded, where the proteins are folded improperly. These proteins that are folded improperly, they can either be repaired by the unfold protein response or their accumulation will lead to cell death caused by the accumulation of misfolded proteins. And this is the hallmark of neurodegenerative disorders. So endoplasmic reticulum stress caused by the accumulation of misfolded proteins causes uh, 
of cell death by apoptosis so this is a situation where there is cell death but the cell death is the, but where the cell injury didn't affect ATP generation and the enzymes required for generating apoptosis are still able to to function properly and then whenever we want to determine what are the factors that lead to necrotic versus apoptotic cell death we have to first think about is oxidative phosphorylation impaired yes that means the death will be necrotic no that means there will be sufficient ATP to trigger and induce apoptosis is the structural integrity of, of the, the plasma membrane affected? Well, how? Is it affected partially? That will give enough time to induce apoptosis. If the damage is necrotic, then that, if the damage is, is grave, leading to leakage, that will cause necrosis. If the mitochondrial membrane is, 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 is damaged, if the lysosomal membrane is damaged, in a, a major way leading to the leakage of these degradative enzymes contained within the lysosome that would cause death by necrosis however any other form of death where there is misfolded proteins any other form of cell injury where there is accumulation of misfolded proteins where there is a, a peroxidation of the plasma membrane or a generation of reactive oxidative species that would lead to cell death by apoptosis not necrosis so when it comes to the stressor we think about what it does and that will determine the kind of impact it will have in cell injury and cell death so this is the, the let's look at ischemia and hypoxia which is a form of an ischemia ischemia and hypoxia which is a form of internal stressors so what is is uh, hypoxia hypoxia is a deficiency like let's say this is a tissue and this is an artery a blood vessel carrying oxygenated artery a blood vessel carrying bl oxygenated blood to the tissue now let's say there is an atherosclerotic plaque or a fibrotic plaque that occludes the diameter of this blood vessel you see before this plaque before this plaque hundred percent of blood used to perfuse this tissue now let's say only 60 percent of blood is able to 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 is able, is able to be delivered to this tissue so that means only 60 percent of the of the tissue will receive blood and the other 40 percent will suffer from ischemia since we don't have enough blood there is a deficiency in blood supply this is called ischemia So deficiency in blood supply that's called ischemia while a deficiency in oxygen supply that is called hypoxia well the the the, the, the tissue the part of the tissue that isn't receiving blood what will it suffer from well what does the blood contain the blood contains oxygen the blood contains uh, nutrients like glucose vitamins and uh, minerals and also there is a third thing that that the blood does it, it contains oxygen and it also contains nutrients to give these cells that the cells will uptake and, and catabolize and make energy out of and the third thing is these cells accumulate metabolic waste like 
nitrogenous waste and carbon dioxide. So the blood circulation will flush and will remove and detoxify the tissue from all the metabolic waste buildup. Metabolic waste buildup. If there is ischemia, that means there is only so much oxygen to be delivered, there is only so much nutrients to be delivered, and there is a lot of metabolic waste building up because only so much of, of, of the metabolic waste is being flushed and carried out by the blood. So that is ischemia. So part of ischemia is a deficiency in oxygen supply, and that is called hypoxia. So is ischemia a cause of hypoxia? Yes. Is ischemia the only cause of hypoxia? No. There is a situation like anemia, where in, for example, iron deficiency anemia. Iron is required for the synthesis of hemoglobin. If someone is suffering from iron deficiency anemia, they're not suffering from ischemia. Their blood is not occluded by an atherosclerotic plaque. There is an inability to generate the hemoglobin that is able to carry oxygen oxygen in the blood and that will cause them to suffer from uh, from oxygen de deficiency hypoxia or in the case of a toxic a toxin like uh, a toxic substance like carbon monoxide carbon monoxide binds hemoglobin more than 100 times stronger than oxygen so it competes so carbon monoxide competes with oxygen competes with oxygen on hemoglobin binding sites. So that will cause the cells to not have the adequate amount of oxygen supply because the binding sites that were supposed to be occupied by oxygen are now occupied by carbon monoxide. So carbon monoxide poisoning causes hypoxia. Uh, anemia, iron deficiency anemia or sickle cell anemia where the structure of, of the red blood cell is damaged and una unable to carry oxygen. That causes, that can cause hypoxia. But it does not cause ischemia. But in the end, ischemia or hypoxia, one of the m m major causes as we see here in hypoxia is a metabolic waste buildup and that is toxic and can cause cell injury. Nutrient deprivation, the cell can no longer have the vitamins and cofactors and the, 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 the macromolecules, the, these energy macromolecules that can be catabolized like uh, these carbohydrates, these uh, uh, fatty acids and these proteins they are no longer there for the cell to uptake and break them down and make good use of. And that causes cell injury. And then there is no oxygen. If there is no oxygen, that means no oxidative phosphorylation. And our body needs from 75 to 80 kilograms of ATP per day in order to survive. And if there is no ATP, how are the enzymes going to function? And if the enzymes are not functioning, who is going to catalyze the essential life saving, life required by chemical pathways like replication and single transduction pathways and all of these numerous pathways required for the survival of the cell. So the cell will die by necrosis. Again, when another, so decrease in oxidative, uh, a diminished oxidative phosphorylation, diminished oxidative phosphorylation uh, activity leads to a deficiency in ATP. Deficiency in ATP, if not rectif, will initially cause detachment of uh, ribosomes from the endoplasmic reticulum and a concomitant decrease in, in protein synthesis and uh, the cell will, will initially try to make an, adapt, an adaptive response and try to reverse the injury back to a, to, an, to a reversible injury by shifting from oxidative phosphorylation which is an aerobic respiration mechanism. The cell will try to shift to anaerobic glycolysis and anaerobic glycolysis can only work for so long because it requ 
anaerobic glycolysis requires an ample storage of glycogen and also requires and also generates metabolic waste like lactic acid which causes an increase in proton concentration and a decrease in pH leading to acidity which is very injurious to the cell so eventually if this if, if the stimulus of hypoxia isn't rectified this deficiency in oxygen isn't re isn't repaired and rectified the stimulus will go on and the duration of the stimulus which is a factor of, of or that 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 call it is the fact that it determines if the cell will be injured the, 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 the duration will go on the duration of of this uh, stressful stimulus will lead to to uh, to the 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 metabolic buildup and leads to the cell reversing revert reverting reversing from from uh, an injured going on from injured cell to uh, to uh, to cell death and uh, but before but initially when there is a diminished supply of ATP due to diminished if there's a diminished supply of oxygen that limit that leads to a diminished activity of oxidative phosphorylation diminished activity of oxidative phosphorylation leads to diminished production of ATP diminished production of ATP leads to detachment of ribosomes from the endoplasmic reticulum apparatus and leads to increase in anabolic in anaerobic glycolysis leads to an increase in anaerobic glycolysis and that comes with many negative consequences like like a decrease in pH and a depletion of the of the glycogen storage of the cell and all the membrane dependent the ATP dependent ion transport will be destroyed and there will be an influx of potassium down concentration gradient since there is no ATP so sodium will flow intercellularly and potassium will flow extracellularly leading to endoplasmic reticulum swelling and cellular swelling and loss of microvilli blebs now this is the first step talking about diminished if this stimulus if, if, if this stressful stimuli goes on and the duration increases the stress will intensify and the cell will die via necrosis so initially it will have these reversible cell injury features shifting to anaerobic glycolysis a decrease in sodium potassium ATPase and membrane tr transport and uh, detachment of ribosomes these are features of reversible cell injury that we will talk about later on but for now these are initial features of reversible cell injury and we will see that the the reversible cell injury will now shift from being reversible instead of going to being a reversible injury from from a reversible to a normal homeostatic uh, state it will go from reversible into irreversible injury so as we will see here we will go from reversible features to irreversible features which is necrotic death and the morphological features of ne necrotic death we will talk about uh, in the next session which are caches necrosis or fat necrosis or coagulative necrosis depending on the, the 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 stressor and the cell involved but we will talk about in, in, in the proper time Okay, so we talked about diminished oxygen supply leading to diminished ATP generation leading to death by necrosis eventually if not rectified in the right time and the reversal from reversible injury to irreversible injury cell death by necrosis. Now, another thing I want to talk about, and that is the reactive oxygen. So now we talked about mitochondria and oxidative stress. 
Now, when we also talked about membrane damage, depending on what is the nature of the damage. If the damage is severe, causing leakage in the lysosome, that will be death by necrosis. A damage is severe in the plasma membrane, leading to leakage of cellular content, that is death by necrosis. A damage is severe to the membrane of the mitochondria, leading to a, uh, a loss of the proton motive force and a destruction to the to the all, all the apparatus participating in the electron in the in the oxidative phosphorylation processes that leads to that leads to uh, uh, death by necrosis a lesser intense a lesser a lesser injurious stimuli in intensity will cause reversible injury as in as in as in the case of a minor defect in the plasma membrane or minor defect in the like as in the channels of the plasma membrane or a minor defect in the membrane of the mitochondria or a mi or, or, or leading to leading to uh, apoptosis because the the there is no leakage of content of the cell and the ATP is still there is enough ATP for the apoptotic enzymes to operate. Then there is uh, endoplasmic reticulum stress. Endoplasmic reticulum stress we discussed and that is a major cause of apoptotic cell death where there is a, the, the accumulation of tangled up proteins that are not folded proper, uh, properly and they accumulated and there is an increase in their turnover and the chaperones are unable to fold these proteins properly and the, the, the rate of synthesis, synthesis and creation and translation far exceeds the rate of their degradation and ubiquitination and their destiny for degradation so, so their accumulation causes death by apoptosis. Here ATP is not affected, their accumulation will cause death by apoptosis and as we said this is a hallmark of this is a hallmark of cell death by uh, this is a hallmark of neurodegenerative diseases such as Huntington disease and uh, Alzheimer's disease. Now it's time to talk about reactive oxidative species generating oxidative stress. So when we hear about the concept of oxidative stress, what do we mean? We mean that free radicals Reactive oxidative species are free radicals such as superoxide and these free radicals are able to damage the three main important features of the cell. They can damage the plasma membrane, they can damage the the, mito the, the, the DNA, the nucleic acids as we see here. Reactive oxidative species, they are generated as a cause of damage. They are generated as stress stimuli, as a cause of damage for, for uh, as, as there is damage for the, for the mitochondria. So if there is one of the causes of reactive oxidative species generation is a defect in mitochondria because in the mitochondria we have the redox reaction of oxidative phosphorylation. So oxidative phosphorylation is a redox reaction that can sometimes go in, in a state of injury, isn't carried out to the, to the maximal capacity leading to the generation of, of reactive oxidative species. These reactive oxidative species have such as superoxide and superoxide can and reactive oxidative species can damage the cells by doing one of three things they can destroy the the plasma membrane by targeting the lipids in the in the in the plasma membrane so the reactive oxidative species cause lipid peroxidation where they cause the generation of peroxides and these peroxides are unstable causing damage to the 
integrity of the membrane and there is also so they target lipids they also target proteins reactive oxidative species target the sulfhydryl groups that are involved in the folding the conformational folding of proteins so proteins are in uh, in a primary conformation secondary conformation and then they fold up become tertiary conformation and quaternary conformation these conformations take place and these bends happen due to the sulfhydryl groups which are targeted by reactive oxidative species the targeting of sulfhydryl groups in the proteins by reactive oxidative species causes protein crosslinking protein breakdown and protein misfolding leading to the unfolded protein response and leading to accumulation of unfolded proteins and causing these the, the causing cell death by accumulation of unfolded proteins also reactive oxidative species when they target proteins they can damage a protein that is required for the cell as in the case in the cystic fibrosis transporter you see this cystic fibrosis transporter allows the transport of water and chloride across it if there are free radicals they attack and they target this transporter proteins leading to an impairment in the transport of chlorine and of, of chloride and, and water and leading to the buildup of mucus in the lungs so that's as far as how reactive oxidative species target protein cross-linking as far as the lipids in the plasma membrane reactive oxidative species target the unsaturated double bond the unsaturated carbon double bond in the plasma membrane leading to membrane breaks they cause peroxidation and they react with this double bond in the plasma this unsaturated this unsaturated this is saturated with hydrogen saturated with hydrogen saturated with hydrogen while this bond is unsaturated this double bond is unsaturated it will be the target of reactive oxidative species destroying the integrity of the plasma membrane leading to to increased membrane per permeability and death by apoptosis and here they cause protein cross-linking, protein breakdown, protein misfolding, and cause death of the cell by apoptosis. Do reactive oxidative species spare the DNA and nucleic acids? No. The reactive oxidative species can react with particularly the thymine residue and they destroy the thymine residue leading to DNA damage and mutations. When there is DNA damage and mutations, the, the, the cell 